Hi, I'm Kevin Du and welcome to my review of the JG Aurora A5 3D printer. Disclaimer first, this 3D printer was sent to me by Gearbest for free to make a review of it. However, the opinions on this machine are fully mine. I'd have probably never bought this machine as I haven't heard of it before. So I'm happy that Gearbest made this possible. And it turned out far better than expected. Let's start with an overview. This Cartesian printer is quite large compared to my other machines. The print volume measures 305mm or 1 foot on both the X and Y axis and 320mm or 12.5 inches on the C. It's pretty much a finished machine right out of the box. You will just need to install 7 screws and connect 3 plugs. It is a single extruder machine and comes with a bad cooling fan. It uses the same nozzles as the E3 DV6 hot end stew, although the hot end is probably their own design. Furthermore, there is a heated bed with a glass plate and some coating that feels and behaves very similar to the Anycubic Ultra Base. Prints stick to it very well and release only if the temperature is below 40 degrees Celsius. Cleaning it with alcohol after each print makes the next one stick just as good. The controller is an MKS Base mainboard with a touchscreen for easy input. The software can resume prints after power was turned off and there's also a filament runout sensor that pauses the print when filament runs out or breaks. The design looks relatively modern and definitely not cheap, while the warning labels do as a side note. The spool holder is mounted in the back, keeping the printer's footprint small. There are no visible wires as they are all hidden within these cable tubes. Furthermore, there are no noticeable sliding rails as they are all covered. On the back side of the printer there's a power inlet with a switch. And on the right side there's a USB connector for USB printing and uploading the firmware and a second USB slot for printing offline via a USB stick. The printer came in a quite large box, which has two layers containing the printer base, half a pound or a quarter of a kilogram of white test PLA, the Gantrivis frame, the spool holder and a small box containing the USB sticks, screws and washers for the build, a leveling card and much more. The build is relatively easy and should not take more than 15 minutes. Before you start however, check every screw that you can find on a machine and retention them as most came loose in my case. Two were even missing, but I have already thrown away the packaging, so I will never know whether they were there in the first place and I just replaced them with new 8mm long M3 screws. Also, make sure to set the correct input voltage, the switch can be accessed through the hole in the back of the base. You need to lay the gantry on the side and slide in the base. The base has two slots on each side where the gantry fits in. Two of the thicker screws, together with a washer, need to get screwed in on each side, so that's four in total. Next, attach the spool holder on the back of the right side using three screws. And that's it with the assembly, as long as there are no additional problems. Connecting the power cable is the last step before you can finally switch on the machine for the first time. It starts up after a short booting sequence. The touchscreen is very easy to use, for instance, let's move the axis for testing. Click on the big move button to open up the move axis menu. Now you can set by how far the axis should move and clicking the corresponding button will do what it says. In my case, all axes including the extruder work just fine. Now it's time to level the bed. Tension all leveling screws to avoid an accident during the process. Home all axes first and then choose leveling. Take your leveling card or even better, a sheet of paper, lay it on the left back corner and choose the first point. And you can see where the positions are on the buttons. Adjust each leveling screw accordingly to achieve a perfect level, which is reached when you feel some resistance when pulling the paper. Not too much and not too less is the key. Go on to the next points and repeat all steps at least a second time. Now it's time to preheat the printer and feed the filament. Click on heat in the main menu and choose a proper temperature for both the hot end and the heated bed. For PLA this is around 200 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and about 60 degrees Celsius for the heated bed. Hidden inside the set menu there's a change filament option. Click it and wait for the nozzle to fully heat up. Then put filament into the feeding hole and click in. The filament feeds automatically. Same goes for unloading which is very convenient. However, my heated bed didn't heat up. When looking at the heat menu, it always said 0 degrees Celsius aka not connected. I quickly realized that the heated bed connector was loose. But it wasn't just loose, it also busted off the copper of the PCB. Furthermore, the connector was connected wrongly. The sensor was actually connected to the heating output and the heater was connected to the sensor input. Well. 
I quickly scraped off the solder mask and soldered the wires directly on, correctly this time. However, I'm sure that if I had contacted support because of this issue, I would have probably received a new heated bed. With the heated bed still disassembled, I took a look at the insides. The cover is screwed onto the base by three screws in the back and two in the feet in the front. I have to point out that this case is well wired and all long wires are looped and no wire is hitting something. To my surprise, I realized that the BSU outputs 24 volts instead of the usual 12 volts, which allows thinner cables to the heated bed. The controller is a maker baseboard, which supports up to two extruders. The touch screen module has a hidden SD slot and the software running on it is Marlin and you can download the correct files from the website. The 16GB USB stick contains a user guide that just tells you how to install and use the slicing software as well as some safety stuff, an assembly instructions video, some pre-sliced models, a model of the fan duct so you can print it later, two old Cura versions and their own software, JG Create, which is a more modern version of Cura but with their own printers pre-added. I ended up using this slicer software for my first prints and the software is really easy to use, well it's Cura. On the first startup, you have to select your machine. Then add your model and adjust the settings as you want them to be. The default settings seem to work just fine however. Finally, don't forget to export the G-code file. My first print was the pre-sliced cylinder on a cube and the first try already failed. The nozzle was too far away from the bed. Therefore I recommend to use normal 80 grams per square meter or 20 pounds paper instead of the leveling card. The second try was spot on. I also printed the XYC calibration cube which seems to come out just fine. Then I printed it again but switched off the power during the print to test the resume function. And to my surprise it really works. The printer just homes the X and Y axis and continues where it left out. Later in the same print the filament accidentally ran out and yet again the printer did its job well. I printed this fire dragon by MakerBot and it worked out perfectly. If I had printed it with a different color the layer lines would have been less visible. There is a tiny bit of sea wobbling left probably caused by the broken but still working C couplers. It's not bad though, as you can see in my next prints. The compact 3D printer test failed however. I'm guessing that the main reason for this is the weak parts cooling fan. I've also printed another fan duct which worked out fine without any issue. A waste printed in waste mode also came out pretty nicely. The only small issue was that the option retract on layout change was switched on causing these stupid artifacts. As PLA went fine, I tried to use BETG. The low poly squirtle came out very nice and without strings. The same is true for this large Chameleon, which has been the largest print on this machine so far. Overall, this printer is very good for the price. It produces nice prints but could come with a better parts cooling fan. Furthermore, the hot end fan sometimes sounds like it's not going to get very old. I assume that other users don't have to go through all of these issues. Thanks to its assisting features like filament change, operating this machine is very simple. The heated bed coating is very good as you don't have to stick new masking tape after every second print. Currently it's available for $350 on Gearbest. If you're searching for an easy to build and easy to use 3D printer that still produces great prints or if you're a newcomer and want to buy your first printer, I can definitely recommend this machine over all of the others that I have. Again, this printer was sent to me for free as a review copy and I'm sure that it will go with me through many projects. Thank you to Gearbest for making this video possible and thank you for watching this video. If you want to support me, make sure to click the affiliate link down in the description. Even just clicking helps me a lot. Have a nice day.